Hi everyone, um, my name's Martin and uh, for those of you that haven't met me, I work for Inspiration Creative um, and uh, yeah, I, I want to do some stories for you today, some poems, that I, one, well one that I've created and another one by a really great poet called Edward Lear. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you have heard of him, uh, heard of him and I'm sure a lot of you will recognise my first poem. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to know how your weeks have been. If you can write in the message column, uh, let me know how you've all been getting on. I've had an OK week um, trying to entertain my three year old mainly. So my week's all been about sort of playing with dolls, wrestling and, and watching CBeebies, um, which is OK. But I've got to be honest, I'm getting a bit bored of it now. We're getting out for a couple of walks, which is nice, but it would be nice to get out a bit more often, wouldn't it? Um, so, yeah, let me know how you guys have been getting on. I'd really love to love to hear it. Also, um, I put a shout out uh, last week for any poems or stories that you want to create. So if any of you have any stories that you'd like to, um, you know, like to send to me, I'd, I'd really, really like to hear them. If you have any stories or poems, please post them on the, um, well, actually, you know, message them to Inspiration, Inspiration Creative. Go onto the Inspiration Creative page and put, tick, tick, uh, click on the message icon. And that's uh, that's where you can send any of your po stories or poems uh, to us. Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to chat a little bit more, wait for a few more people to join in. Um, yeah, um, but don't let, yeah, let, me, let me know what you've been getting on with, what you've been doing. Uh, we've got a couple of people. Um, maybe I'll get started slowly um, and then, yeah, wait for, wait for a few more to join up. The first poem I'm going to tell you uh, is one of my favourites and it's one of my wife's favourites and it's written by Edward Lear. And it's called The Owl and the Pussycat. And uh, yeah, I'm sure some of you have heard of it, but uh, I'd like to tell you it. It goes like this. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. The owl looked up to the stars above and sung to a sweet guitar. Oh, pussy, oh, pussy, oh, pussy, my love. What a beautiful pussy you are. You are. What a beautiful pussy you are. Pussy said to the owl, you elegant fowl, how charmingly sweet you sing. Oh, let us be married, too long we have tarried, but what shall we do for a ring? They sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows. And there in a wood, a piggywig stood with a ring at the end of his nose, his nose, with a ring at the end of his nose. Dear, um, uh, dear pig, are you willing to sell for a shilling your ring, said the piggy, I will. So they sailed away, um, <laughs> uh, so, so they took it away, were married next day by the turkey that lived on the hill. They dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a runcible spoon. And hand in hand on the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon, the moon. They danced by the light of the moon. Really beautiful little story, that one. I, I absolutely uh, adore it. I adore Edward Lear. If you get any time, Type in Edward Lear on on uh, on Google and just look up some of his stories. They're absolutely fantastic. My writing is really influenced by Edward Lear. And the next poem I'm going to tell you um, is one of my own. It's quite a long story. I, I warn you, it gets a little bit scary at points. So if you're of a frightened disposition, uh, be warned, it can get a little bit scary. But I uh, promise you everything works out in the end. It goes like this. Harvey Hand was just a hand, a hand was all he was. And as a hand, a solo hand, he felt alone because he had no one to talk to except for his old glove. But gloves are just material, they can't share mutual love. One day he thought, I've had enough, my skin's withered and old. I won't dry up and fade away without someone to hold. He hopped up on his fingers and packed his old handbag and so began his journey the best he'd ever have. He left his house on Handel Street, skipped down for Langey Lane, and there met a poor tickler bird who looked in dreadful pain. I used to be a joyful bird till I fell out my nest. I lost a wing, too sad to sing, my friends migrated west. But when I tried to follow them, my one wing couldn't cope. I just went round in circles, I didn't have a hope. I've got a plan, said Harvey Hand, let us two merge as one. We'll join and sing, I'll be your wing, let's chase the setting sun. And so they fluttered westward, 
the birdie and the hand. They glided on the mistral wind to find a brand new land. They fluttered by the gludging slops, the hergs of wiggle flaps. They fed on skybound flab flab crops, no time for evening naps. They were airborne for several days, weeks, months, they were not sure. Till they saw four great blumble cows lay laughing on the floor. That's them, birds sang, my tickler gang, I hear that joyful sound. They floated to the sound she loved, the laughter on the ground. The laughing birds were covered in, the laughing cows were covered in, the birds bird loved so well. Some blue, some pink, like rainbow ink, some green, some red as hell. They turned saw bird without a word, their small eyes filled with tears. Oh dear old friend, your wing will mend, you've saved us from our fears. Or oh, we thought you'd been abducted by a skunk or spiteful tween. But now you're back on last, we'll snack, oh love, where have you been? So then birdie she told them of her troubles and new friend. While sharing love and laughter, her broken wing did mend. They all held our hand, Harvey as the saviour of their love. You have our trust, be one of us, live soaring up above. I can't, said Ham begrudgingly, though proud of new friends found. This time's been fun, but I am one destined to dwell on ground. But please don't take this personally, I mean to cause no harm. Your love means very much to me, your love sits in my palm. He trekked Lord Zumwig's winding road, the toothbrush moors of Crom. He slipped on the slops of a dram-scale toad, but still he marched right on, until he reached the hidden depths of the forest of Hoig Weiss. Here lurked the hooded axe wizards, intruding limbs they sliced. The shadows of the sly mirth trees formed shadows in his mind. He lost coherence mentally, the rotten roots entwined, him in a prison of no hope, no chance of break away. The flesh judge of the forest screamed, Let court commence and pray that we don't find you guilty, five-footed spider thing. For if we do, we'll torture you, firm fury we will bring. You hereby stand accused you beast of trespass, first degree. Law one of the old spirit act. Now, scum, how do you plea? Poor Ham was shaking, bolts of fear pulsated through his soul. I lost my course, misnavigated, please grant me parole. With short deliberation, the verdict was returned. With life as the slave of the drink blood bear, your lesson you will learn. The thorn whips marched, the handcuffed hand, towards the rotten smell of death. They reached an opening in the ground where festering limbs were left. They lowered Harvey through the void on tethered slimer thine. The walls were drenched in nameless blood that dripped like spilled red wine. The deeper he dropped, the hotter it got. But though he was hot, the but ho though he was hot, the drop didn't stop. Down, down, down went Harvey. Up, up, up went the pain. Infernal torment drove Harvey insane. Deeper, deeper, surrounded in flames until he reached the utter depths, the depths of the drink blood bear. So Han looked up at once and saw a terrifying beast. Blood dripped off of his jaws. He had a child as his feast. But Harvey had no time to ponder this alarming sight. As Bear's, uh, Bear's eyes now grew sinister and eerie, deathly bright. Bear said, now little hand, I have a dreadful task for you. But first, before we start, I'd like to introduce my crew. I have a group of slaves, you'll see, they all are body parts. That I've ripped off my feasts and now they're forced to pull my cart. So, pulling this bear's chariot were parts of different size. Two knees, two feet, two shins, two calves and rather muscly thighs. There was a head, a heart, two lungs, but what stood out the most to heart was a hand that was like Harvey, but as pale as a ghost. Harvey had never seen a thing so beautiful yet scared. The whole sight looked incredible, so our friend Harvey stared. Don't stare, you little hand-shaped scum, your job is now to pull me through the darkest depths of night while I do deeds so cruel. So they all pulled his chariot down deep as deep can be. They passed underground lakes, then reached a vast underground sea. Their murdogs howled and wailed and moaned to see our dreadful crew. 
But those slaves had to carry on, through pain they poured on through, until they reached the cave's great mouth, the moon shone in the sky. In front there was a village, Bear said, someone's gonna die, as I is getting hungry, and that means that some poor child is gonna slide right down my throat, my guts are going wild. They quickly reached the village, in the houses they heard snores. The bear looked so excited, then he stretched out his great claws. I'm gonna eat a little child, they're all having a snooze. I've got my pick of any house, now which one shall I choose? Do I want a tall or tiny child, one slow or one who's quick? I think I'll pick a random one, a child lucky dip. So Bear soon put his paws into a window, open wide. Poor Harvey froze with shock and fear, he fainted terrified. And as he clapped unconscious, his sad mind drifted away, to a time that he remembered of what seemed a distant day. A time when he, with tickler bird sung, went soaring in the air. A time with once, well, a time when once with friends he flew and never had a care. This dream stilled Harvey's mind. He felt now resolute and calm. His friends were still with him. They'd given love deep in his palm. <gasps> in his palm! In his palm! There was love in his palm! So Harvey then awoke and knew immediately what to say. He grabbed the hand, the pale one, and said, It's all okay. If we all bond together, then we can defeat the beast. But we should all act quickly, as he's just about to feast. We must all merge to one as one. We are now stronger. We are all stronger now as one. So they and so they did, and each part now grew, grew black, brighter than the sun. As one great whole, they killed the bear to end his wicked reign, and no one in this land would ever hurt a thing again. As Harvey and his friends were now one body, they would protect all things from pain and suffering, from cruelty and neglect. With love they conquered all, now Harvey was so very sure that with new friends and joy, he wasn't lonely anymore. I hope you enjoyed that, everyone. Um, as I said at the beginning, please, please, please tell us some of your stories or some of your poems and send them to the Inspiration Creative page. There's a little icon there where you can click message and uh, those, uh, those poems will come right through to you. I hope you've had a lovely time and I hope you have a safe um, rest of the week and I will see you soon. Take care, everybody.